the co-chair for the Harris Falls campaign, Mitch Landrieu, is here. Um, if you've heard any of this, tell me um, what you what your thoughts are about how you know. And I've heard this too from talking to, to sources in and around the campaign that where she is in front of voters and any group of voters, she moves them. She moves them in her direction. That is not always. People should understand that is not always the case when you work in a campaign. When your candidate and her message is the best asset you have, tell me how that informs the strategic decisions over the next 25 days. Well, Nicole, thanks. It's good. To, it's good to be with you and to my friends Cornell and and, and to the Reverend. Uh, good day to you. Uh, just a couple of things. First of all, I think President Obama's speech last night, as you said, better than anybody else, lays out the stark contrast and the stark choice that the country has. There is a tremendous threat to the country, and then there's a great opportunity. Donald Trump clearly is a tremendous threat, and I think President Obama laid out very, very clearly about why that is. Essentially, a 78-year-old billionaire who cares about himself. And if you needed any more evidence of it, not only did he was he going to let Mike Pence be hung, but just the the um, the anger that President Biden spoke to about hurricane relief really struck with me because, as you know, mm -hmm. I was Lieutenant Governor of Louisiana and Mayor when Katrina hit, and the fact that any leader would try to prey on people's anxiety and weaknesses during that most vulnerable time pretty much tells you everything you need to know about whether you think that person is ever going to lend a helping hand. He has already decided that the way to win, the way for him to get power, the way to help himself is to divide everybody else in the country. And if there was ever a time for us to come together, and there are many, but one of them is when we're recovering from a storm, because anybody who's been through a storm will tell you that a hurricane does not discriminate. It hits everybody equally. And so I was, I was very heartened by that. Secondly, his communication to the young men, he wasn't just, I know that he was talking in that room to young black men, but some of what he said resonated for white men as well about what being a real man really is, what toxic masculinity will do for us. When a person's policies demean our wives or our partners or our daughters or our mothers or our aunts or even our neighbors who might look differently from him, the entire fabric of community rips apart. And so I agree with you. It shouldn't fall just on African-American men or African-American women. You know, other folks need to step up to the plate as well. Cornell reaches a very good point. And by the way, this vice president, as you know, uh, has been running an incredible campaign. She mm -hmm. is everywhere all the time. People first said, oh, you know, she's not getting out enough. Then she's been everywhere to hell across America, and they go, well, she didn't go to exactly the right place. Well, now she needs new policies. Okay, well, look, here's an 82-page policy that goes from soup to nuts about ways you can help me. Oh, well, she ought to do one more thing. One of the things that's happening right now is they keep raising the bar on the vice president. You know what she's doing? She's just jumping over it. So if you want to help, go to KamalaHarris.com and get engaged in what everybody here knows is going to be a battle to the finish and the future of the country hangs in the balance. Cornell is exactly right. Everybody wants to know, thanks for what you did for me, but what you're going to do for me going forward? How are you going to make my life better? How are you going to reduce my risk? How are you going to lower my burden? How are you going to help me support myself and my family? And of course, the vice president has come out very strongly talking about helping people buy homes with, with, with tax credits building three million more homes, lowering the cost of prescription drugs, trying to help those of us in this country, and many young men have this, where they have an older parent and then they have kids that they're trying to take care of with, with their partners and their spouses, to do that too. All of these things are designed to help lift people up and to pull them together. Donald Trump's whole plan is to rip people apart because he can only win when the country is divided, and that's when the country loses too. It's it's such a layered argument, and um, I worked on campaigns, and, and you're right. It comes in fast and furious, do this, do that. I, I, I think it was most acute ahead of her debate where I, I noticed it on this program um, where you know, she, she had to be tough but nice. She had to be substantive but make a – I mean, I, I hear you. And I will say that with 25 days to go, everyone wants her to do everything because I think most of us in this conversation want to continue to live in a democracy. Tell me at a strategic – level, how you really pierce that bubble, do you, do you have enough time to make clear, because it, it, it sounds like the, the, the issue with men isn't about winning over every man in America, it's about shrinking the margins. And Sarah Longwell, who's a brilliant pollster, has pointed to Correct. this gender gap as well. And, and, I, and I, I wonder, you know, you, you had Steve Kerr's great speech, and Steph Curry, and Magic Johnson gave a great speech. I mean, the whole idea that anyone, I mean, anyone raising a, a, a boy knows that what you are teaching 
young boys and girls is what what being strong is and isn't. And it Correct. isn't being a bully. It isn't standing silently while some I mean, the entire Republican Party could fall under that indictment of what strength is and what courage is. And you can't act like Donald Trump or Mitch McConnell or Kevin McCarthy in an elementary school without getting expelled. You can't be silent while someone is bullying someone. You can't lie. You can't cheat. You can't steal. You can't live by different rules than the other kids. You can't do any of those things. So, so where is the coalition that is already enthusiastic and publicly supporting Kamala Harris really driving that message all through the battleground states in the final 20 five days. Well, a couple of things. First of all, President Obama took a big swing at it with a big bat last night, as have many people. But let's keep this clear. This is not a complicated issue for the country. Donald Trump is unfit to be the president. We, we, keep, we keep forgetting to remind people about this, but 25 of his cabinet members, people who know him the best, <laughs> like him the least, and have said to us that he is dangerous for democracy. Donald Trump has been convicted of 34 felonies. Donald Trump has been found to have sexually abused somebody civilly. He, civilly. he has, in fact, gone bankrupt six times. Now, if Donald Trump showed up to your kid's little league game, baseball, basketball, soccer, whatever it is that you play, and said he wanted to be the coach of your kid's team, most parents in America would kick his butt off the field. So why in the world would anybody think that those values and the way that he acts are things that ought to be in the presence of the United States? That's part number one. Part number two is. Can is I get paused? I mean, I mean, he he wouldn't he wouldn't pass the vet because to be an umpire or a coach, you're vetted, yeah. and he's a convicted felon. So, so not even would they say, not want him, he wouldn't be vetted out. Correct. But Nicole, the people of America have to face this head on. They know that already. So the mm. question to them is the same one President Obama put that to them. Answer the question: Why is it okay for that person to be the leader of the free world, to be the example to not only the country but the world of what America is? And we have to just stand up. And reject it. Listen, freedom's not free. Reverend mm -hmm. Sharpton, Carnell, John Lewis, when you think about it, all the people over the years that really suffered and sacrificed for the freedoms that we have cannot believe that American people are going to basically bless those, those things that Donald Trump had because they're not virtues, they're vices. And that character of that person leads to choices, and those choices lead to consequences that are bad. Now, Kamala Harris, on the other hand, shows up. She goes to some of the best schools in the country. She gets elected as a prosecutor and puts bad guys and other people in jail. She fights cartels. She then fights about businesses. She fights businesses that actually, you know, steal from other people, like Donald Trump's businesses. Then she becomes a United States senator. Then she becomes a vice president, probably one of the most qualified people ever to run. And some people are saying, eh, you know what? I think I like that J.D. Vance kid who's only been in office 600 days. That, that can only be one thing. And so you have to really kind of just ask people to think about this again, because freedom is not free, friends. You got to show up. You got to go to the polls. We're trying to go where everybody is. Love the fact that Cornell and the Reverend are keeping us honest and say, hey, yeah, but you might be missing this. You might be thinking about that. It's all hands on deck. KamalaHarris.com. We got to go get this thing. I think we're going to win. But let me just tell you something. This is fourth down. We're at the goal. There's not a whole lot, a whole lot of time left. We just got to push it over. And that's where the battle of freedom is won on the streets. That's the way it's supposed to be. But if, if, if Donald Trump has his way, that America will cease to exist. Um, there's a scene in Jerry Maguire where it gets a little tense, and then and then uh, Cuba Gooding's character Show says, me the money, "We're baby. just starting. We're just starting. We're just finally getting somewhere." So I, I appreciate you taking my questions, uh, Mitch. Thank you very much for for being here. Um,